Well, good afternoon. It's Friday, February 20th. I'm on the steps of the Capitol building, and inside is where all the work gets done. This is my legislative update, and I can tell you that the Voting Trust 1065 has been signed by the governor. Uh, 1068, which is the cross credit for shared parenting, that's on the governor's desk. Likewise, 1099, the charging order for LLPs, is also on the governor's desk. Uh, Senate Bill 178, which would extend the rural lawyer recruitment plan, has been through the Senate unanimously. And the funding mechanism to help out the deficiency in the LAOTF fund, that is uh, Senate Bill 179. It's a package deal, and your bar commissioners uh, voted to have me come in and support those. Both are through the Senate, and they've been assigned to House Appropriations Committee, and they'll probably be heard later next week. Crossover day is next Wednesday, so the houses, each house is trying to quick finish up their work on their original bills in anticipation of the arrival of other bills uh, coming across. 1067, that was the cap on medical records. Uh, we lost that on a House floor fight vote of 41 to 27. Uh, we'll bring it back next year in one form or another. Uh, frankly, the hospitals primarily led the charge and they didn't have much else to work on up here this year. And so the cost per page of medical records became some huge, huge issue. And uh, notwithstanding the testimony that our clients are paying for pages that run anywhere from, you know, a dollar, dollar thirty-two to as high as almost two dollars, uh, while that found some sympathetic ears, it wasn't enough to overcome twenty-plus lobbyists working against uh, against that bill. Uh, I do acknowledge the assistance of. Roger Tellinghusen from the trial lawyers, who uh, also voted to support uh, support our bill. Um, the nonprofit bill, as you know, uh, we had that tabled. Uh, we've got a different approach that we're going to take next year. I've been working with the business law committee for some revisions, and we'll make it prospective only, plus a few other changes. And I'm kind of excited about bringing that back next next year. Uh, Finally, House Bill 1110, that's a, rate, a very late addition to uh, our legislative workload. That would provide for one additional judge in Sioux Falls, the Second Circuit, and another additional judge out in the Seventh Circuit. Uh, that bill was heard this morning. Uh, the Chief Justice testified, as did presiding judges Larry Long and Jeff Davis, and then I batted cleanup. Uh, they stripped the funding down to one dollar and sent it out due pass unanimously. But just so you understand the, the appropriation process, that's not unusual. They don't know how much money they're going to have. So if they are favorably inclined to a bill, they put they drop the appropriation down to one dollar and send it on. We probably won't get final budget projections and income until the last week of session. So I look for the determination on whether or not the seventh and second circuits are going to get that funding. We probably won't know until probably the 11th, 10th, or 11th of March. And with that note, uh, that concludes my uh, update, and uh, stay tuned.